How y'all doing today? So back on April 5th, um, the Syracuse women's basketball team tried to knock off the number one women's basketball team for the last four years, the Connecticut Huskies, in the women's final game of the year. And let's just say they were not necessarily successful. Uh, Connecticut is, is just a dominant team. And so they won by 31 points. <laughs> it happens. And the Orange team fell. But it was one of those years where it was still magic because they had never won more than one game in the tournament before. And they had never won even one game until three years ago. Is it Four years ago, I guess it is. So they won one, then they won one, then they won one. And then this year they made it all the way to the championship game. And they knocked off a number one along the way. And, you know, they didn't win the ultimate championship, but they weren't expected to. But you know what? They finished number two. And across the nation, it might not necessarily seem like such a big thing. A lot of people are going to forget about it, except for the local people. And you know who else isn't going to forget about it? A lot of young women who are going to be graduating from college and are going to look and see just the type of game this Syracuse team played and say, hey, I think I want to go and play for that team. Um, we barely missed out on getting Brianna Stewart, who is the number one player for Connecticut because she's from here. <laughs> so the way I saw Tuesday, that Tuesday night, um, you know, Syracuse couldn't lose. And, you know, either you're going to have the best player in the game uh, winning the championship or you're going to have the Syracuse team. Now, a couple of days before that, the Syracuse men made the Final Four, and they played North Carolina. And they ended up losing by 19, although at one point it was pretty close. And instead of, once again, looking at that as a major failure, you had to look at that as, wow, what a wonderful way to close the season. Because this was a team that had had a lot of you know adversity. I was getting ready to say diversity. That wouldn't have worked. <laughs> but they had a lot of adversity. The, for nine games, they didn't have their coach. Then they went on a nice winning streak, and then they ended the year kind of badly, uh, even though they still knocked off Duke. And, you know, they had some pretty significant wins, so they made the tournament. And they were getting beat up on by all these supposed experts sitting there saying they didn't even deserve to be in the tournament, and they were going to lose this game and lose this game and lose this game. And then they kept beating those people. And then when they played Virginia, they had a number one seed, they said, okay, this is where it all ends. And then Syracuse came back from a 16-point deficit to win that game. Couldn't beat North Carolina because, you know, North Carolina was still pretty good. And even though I didn't watch the final game, uh, they lost by a miracle shot at the end after they had made a miracle shot. So then, you know, it's not like they lost to a team that was a slouch. But I wanted to talk about this because there is this, perception that a lot of people have that if you're not going to win at all, there's no sense in even trying, and that only the winners really matter. And in some ways, that's true. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I could probably tell you a bunch of the Super Bowl winners, but sometimes I can't tell you who they played. Uh, every once in a while, I can't even tell you who won, unless it was one of my teams, because, you know, it's not anything I necessarily follow. But you still have to appreciate the effort that all these people put in. I mean, think about it this way. This is an interesting way of looking at things. You have 32 teams in football, and not all of them make the playoffs. As a matter of fact, one of those teams, we're gonna okay, let's just call them out, the Cleveland Browns, <laughs> were the worst team in football this past year. And they will get the first pick in the draft. And yet, every single player on the Cleveland Browns football team was better than thousands, tens of thousands of other people who tried out for football teams and couldn't make the team. And it's an interesting perspective because a lot of those guys on the Cleveland team still made over a million dollars a year. Some of them made five or ten million dollars a year on the worst team in football. Now, some people will say, well, they didn't deserve it because the team didn't win. But that's not how it works. How it works is that you put in the effort. You do the best you can, and you get rewarded for that. 
And you might not have the top salary at your position or anything that you do, but you can live pretty well. You know, I tend to like these these home shows. I like to watch them on the weekend where these people go out and they want to buy a new house or they want to have a house built or something. And um, one of the things that initially shocked me when I was watching these shows is you'd have these people walk in and they've got a budget of $500,000 for a house, $750,000. And I'm like, who are these people? <laughs> What the heck are all these people doing? And, you know, it, it's strange because in the area I live in, you don't have that many people. Houses don't cost that much. I have a house that's considered kind of up there and in some areas of where I live, but it's nowhere close to a $750,000 home. And you look at these people and say, well, wait a minute. Are these people the best in their industry? No, because the best in the industry end up having TV shows sometimes. Even sometimes the people who aren't the best in the industry have a TV show. Snooki has a TV show. <laughs> and I don't mean Jersey Shore. I mean, she's got a show with her husband where they go and they buy properties and they redesign homes. So, you know, I don't know how good she is. Actually, I have to tell you the truth. She turns out to be kind of a good designer. She's got a nice eye for it. And her husband and his buddies can build and reconstruct houses pretty well. But you don't have to be the top person in anything. And I say this because I know a lot of people say, well, I'm scared I'm not going to be good enough. And you don't have to be better than everybody. I do some speaking. I do some professional speaking. And I speak on the topic of leadership often. And I have come to this belief and it turns out to be true that if there were 10 leadership speakers in a room talking to 100 people saying the exact same words that at the end of it each one of those people are going to have someone who's going to gravitate toward them now one person might end up with 25 and all everyone else has to split that 75 but it might not turn out that way it could be 10 all across the board it could be that one person only gets three people, but you know what? You can do pretty well as an executive coach or as a leadership coach or a trainer or a mentor or whatever with three people. You could do better with more people, but you can still do well with three. And so, you know, I'm sitting here saying, let's stop trying to compete against each other for the numbers. Let's stop trying to compete against each other for the money. Be the best you can be, and you're probably going to do well. Have confidence in yourself. We need to all have confidence in, our, in yourselves. I mean, I've written a couple of books. I'm working on another book right now. I can't sit here and say that I have sold a lot of books. I haven't sold a bunch of books, but you know what? I keep putting out product because there's lots of people who've never written book one. Can't do it. Can't write poems. I have between four and 5,000 articles online and offline. And there are a lot of people who have trouble writing a blog post a month. So, you know, I'm not competing against those people. I compete against me. I do what I can do. And I make whatever money I can make. And whether I'm making billions or millions or thousands, I'm making my money. And I always have that chance to make more. And when I can be better. You can be better. You can make more. But you have to believe in yourself. That's all I'm saying. Go out there and do your best. There's nothing wrong with being second. There's nothing wrong with being third. There's nothing wrong with being number 100. Just do your best. Try. Give it a shot. Today's motivational message. That's all I got for you. Y'all take care. We'll talk next time.